Hey, I'm Kev Kev, Muscom. Welcome back to Mercedes Supercross 3 has Winner the answer. The Mercedes Benz Stadium um, for round nine of the season, halfway mark of the year. As uh, well, it is. Getting into it with Adam through the sand. That's uh, so around another decent circuit for this, from what I remember. A fun circuit, lots of room sections, quite high speed, a bit wider as well. So that was moved like that from Adam, get by the inside. But a tricky circuit as well with all these room sections. It's going to be very easy for riders to pass one another. So we could see some handlebar bashing in the main event and neat races. So this jumped a bit far there, but got the triple still. And as you'll see from the lap time, a bit of a shorter track as well. It's a bit like Minneapolis. Around 50.5. That will do. As uh, this quickest, just by 15,000 of a second though, ahead of Muskin and Tomac in third and Webb in fourth. The only four riders get into the 50s. Then in the 51s, we've got Pleasant around out of top five ahead of Baggett, Anderson, Osborne, Hill, and Joey in the top 10. That's around out of top 20 is Harmon, top 30, Bannister, and Tyler rounds out the field in 40th. So let's repeat that in the heats. Uh, so alongside Austin and Anderson. And underway. Uh, so it's like in the all green, uh, someone put a tough block in the way. Looking at you, Marvin. Looking at you, KTM. Cooper Webb. Uh, she gets a whole shot again ahead of Anderson, Austin, Tevin. And Justin Brayton as well. As we're going to see lots of moves into that hairpin. That's Austin holding up the pack for this. Over a second back. Very nice off the man. There you go, that's how you triple it. Bit high into the burn though. And again. She just about gets away with that. So across the start finish line onto the first prop of that. Got Jason Anderson up to second now, ahead of Austin. And Justin Brayton in fourth. And Tevin rounds out the top fifth. Or Justin Hill does. So go triple. That's how you do that rhythm section, including knocking the Toyota tough butt so you can stay on the track. Oh yeah, you can see why we love Atlanta. Rhythm, speed. Wide open. That is not the time to do some whips though. We can break the 50 second barrier, not quite, but it's a 50.7 on the opening lap. Just attempt third and qualifying. Let's go for the fan sand section. It seems like you got to rev it first, and then when you're halfway around, rev it again, and you get past the other half. Then uh, so it's like Justin's got past Austin, but still a super draw from Austin in his heat race to get maybe through to another main event for the on-demand. Still got Tevin running out of the top five as well. All the big hitters here. Okay, maybe should have whipped it over that jump. The sort of gap is one and a half seconds to Anderson. And there we go, 49 too as Adam runs out. The riders are getting through to the main event at the moment. So go Kazaki advertising. As we case the joint. Soppy seconds there. Soppy doubles. So we've got away with it though. As I think we've still got two laps to go after this one. Well, oh, lead over hills, like three seconds. Remember being that being comfortable in the two fifties, but it's pretty easy on the four fifties. That section as another fifty. She almost goes into the bridge, as in this. I've got Dakota Tenner, Tedder, 
in last. As uh, Anderson in second, Austin in third, and Justin Hill, Malcolm Stewart in fifth. Why am I to Tevin? It seems like Justin Hill has had enough. Up to third or not. Austin fighting back. Love to see that. Proud of that jump. Uh, he's got Malcolm Stewart up to fourth now. Justin Hill down to fifth. Uh, it's on to the final lap. Oh, Justin Bray rounds out the top nine. So he's gone down the order. Dakota's still in last. Find Scotty. Hey, Tevin back into the top five. He's got almost 11 seconds to him after, what, six laps? Uh, so this once again, just using the tactic of using those tough blocks to stay on track. Oh, that's nicely, smoothly done. Need to do that then, carry much less speed into that jump. While still doing the whips and scrubs. There you go, that's perfect through that section. So now the women section. Uh, it's Malcolm Stewart in third now. What's time to Austin? Uh, so across the line for another heat victory. As uh, so Liz wins after six, that's ahead of Anderson, Stewart, Hill, Tevin. In the top five on his Yamaha, best Yamaha ahead of Brayton, who went up to sixth in the end. And Adam on the Suzuki through in seventh. Persinger and Austin scrapes through in ninth. Just ahead of Carl Chisholm, Vince Frise, Alex Ray, Eli Tomic in 15th. There's the big hitter. What's he doing down there? Let's see if we see him in the main event, shall we? He should. Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta is well known for giving us incredible races. Tonight's track looks like another great one. Ricky, how do you see this race shaping up? It has been several years that Supercross makes a stop off in Atlanta. And also this year, the track's design will guarantee an awesome show. Get ready. Here come the RPMs and the roar of the engines. Ready for the gate drop. So here we go then, halfway mark of the season. Main event in Atlanta gets underway as the gates drop alongside Adam and Muskin as KTM crew have still left that tough block hanging. There's all oh, Muskin almost got into the back of this there. Oh no it is. No it is. As Brayton was third, Hill was fourth, Stuart was fifth. What the fuck? I think she touched the aura of Chad Reed then. Not meant to do that. So we go, that's the first challenge. Easy. As we've got Austin in front. As well, someone went very wide there. Cole Chisholm did. As this catching up to the pack. As over the room section, Austin struggling with it a bit. So it's a longer last. Trying to get past Chad Reed, and who's that? Zach Osborne as well. Uh, that's right, Carl Chisholm, what are you doing? Uh, she's alongside Eli Tomic, he's had a poor, poor start. Jumps in front of Tevin. Just about ahead of 2 1 1. And now she's alongside Joe, battling for top 15 place. She gets shoved into Justin as Joe makes some moves. She goes down the inside of the mate, who's very slow there, trying to hold off Joey. There's all Cooper Webb down. So it is into the top 10 almost. It is into the top 10, almost into the top 5. He's down the inside of Blesinger. Oh my gosh, they're playing, playing racquetball with some Yamahas there. Oh no, she's down, hit the bridge. Oh, she just got into the top 10 as well. So she's down in 17th. Uh, there's Osborne now shoving her wide. As you can say, that was maybe the easiest last the first challenge ever. Been in the top five already after a couple of laps. There's Chad Reed in 14. Everyone trying to shove it down his insides. Doing this as well. Not trying to touch his aura this time, though. No. 
as oh Osborne shoves this into Reed. How dare he? No way to treat your elders. And she's banging the top 15 already. You see Tomac and we're battling. Not in the top five though, it's all oh, she gets in the middle of that battle. Rather scruffily. But battling for 12th. Shocking turn of events for those two. Especially Webb. That is for the title. You don't expect to see him all the way down there. It's Tom with the block pass. There's always that down Pleasanger. So now they're battling for a top 10. And oh, someone else is down. That's why right, Tomat pushes Liz into the barriers. Wow. You know, he's not in the not in the mood to play. He's down the inside of Stewart. She didn't touch Reed, did she? I'll be an auto drop back there. So oh, Reed showing the way. Stuck behind Pleasanger. Oh, he makes the move. Nicely done. Good double team there with Liz. You shove him wide. Liz just goes down the inside. Oh, she wasn't even there at all. Now he's got Sackles boy looking for a top 10. Getting it. Head of Tom Ack. Oh, here we go. To put halfway mark of this race. Fireworks about to go off maybe as Muskin leads the way 10 seconds up the road. Trying to find a way past the teammate without being shoved into the grandstand. Well, she just lands on him. Okay, giving him brain damage is in another way, I think. We're doing it. We've got the May battling for a top 10 as well. It's over the jump. Gets into Tormac, who's just making the move on the main. This is like, no, that's my... My move, mate, not yours. And of course, there's a start-finish line. Three wide. And oh, Tormac shoves her. God, the gloves are off between the Kazaki pair, aren't they? All the while, this is helping Webb and Muskin. In eighth and first. Well, this has now cleared her teammate back into the top ten. Then, it's all okay. A lot of speed there. Made it work though. Over oh, the back of Osborne. It's also been very slow in here, as Varna. Here's of course the start finish line, new fast of that for 50.3. Muskin still around 10 seconds up the road, so even though time is running out, gap's consistent despite her battling through the field here. This next up is VC and Anderson. Both of them, is it? No, Anson gets a drop on the exit. He just gets a drop into the next corner. Swings it down the inside. Oh, a bit wide. There's all oh, someone down. There's this up to seventh, though. Want to see who that is? It's Webb. Webb down. He's trying to go down the inside of Anderson in the sand. Not working out though. How about over the rhythm section? Elbow yeah, to elbow with Justin Barsha in front and his Yamo around out the top five. Anderson told to shove it. He's got the message. As he picks up the bike beautifully there. 
well with the throttle at least, not actually picking up the bike. It's now just chasing the top five behind the Justin, Sparsha and Brayton. Taking their line into that final corner as well. And she gets into the 49s, 49.5. There's some 10 seconds behind Muskin now. And into the top five ahead of Barsha. Up to fourth ahead of Brayton. He's got Justin Hill, Blake back out in front. And then the big one. Uh, it's up to fourth. Bit of a gap between Hill and Baggett though. Yeah, a gap of around five seconds. Suzuki can't keep up the KTMs. Can he keep up with the Kazaki as well? Uh, she does a 49 1. They're having none of it though. Less than nine seconds behind Muskin as she takes over third. So now she's got clean air. And she was in these low that time, so bat then. Now what she can can she do? Should she get to the 48s maybe? See so yeah, that's a much smoother pickup there. With the bike rotated and everything in when she had the throttle on. Uh, that's how many laps has she got? She's got two laps after this one. Maybe grab second. She does another 49. There's some five seconds back behind Baggett. There's some four seconds, wasn't it, actually? Power early. Here's around four seconds to get. Don't think she has enough time to make up any more places. But still, great comeback from last. And after a couple of knockbacks when getting through the field as well. And she does a 50 flat. That's not enough to catch up to Baggett. She needs to do like a 47 somehow. We got three and a half seconds closer. I get not as confident over that rhythm section. It's down the back straight, still around three and a half. Unfortunately, that's not that long as well, so. Oh, bag it down though. At the end. As Muskin wins. This in second. But still. As after 13 unlucky laps for some. Muskin wins ahead of this. He did a fast lap with 49-1. Only rider into the 49s. Next, I know Webb did as well, 49-9. Bag it in third after that late fall. Ahead of Hill, Brayton. You know, Tomic up to sixth in the end. So good comeback from him. After the argy bargy of this in the middle part of that race. You've got Barsha in 7th. Osborne ahead of several mate Anderson. And Cooper Webb ran out the top 10 after his fall. As we can further down. Pleasure in 16. Chad Reed, the legend in 19th. Tevin in 20th. Ahead of Joey and Austin. So in the championship at the halfway mark of the season. With 8 rounds remaining. This leads by 28 points ahead of Muskin. Who grabs his second victory of the season. Back up to second in the championship. Eight points ahead of Webb. You've got Bogle in fourth. Elo Tomic in fifth. Eight points behind the Katem. And a single point ahead of Baggett. Who's four ahead of Brayton. Who's five ahead of Osborne. Who's eight ahead of Anderson. Who's ten ahead of VC now. Ahead of Hill. Who's up to 11th. Up a couple of places. Plenty of drops outside of the top 10. Back with Stewart in 13th. The only riders in triple figures. And in the May in 14th. Four places ahead or six points ahead of Barsh, who's up four places. 
He's ahead of Reed. He's dropped down to 17th. Then we've got Seeley around out of the top 20. Math around out of the top 30, up six places. Then he blossed down eight to a 37. Van Martin still rounds out the top 40. Still just 45 riders score points so far this evening. Brandon, the last of them now. So lots of awards. Maybe well deserve a break before the second half of the season as well. So up to level 55. Those three rode the wheels off their machines. We have a tremendous championship fight brewing. But hopefully this wasn't a race went ahead. As uh, so we head to the sandy shores of Daytona Beach and the Daytona International Speedway. That's a pretty pretty venue after the halfway mark break. But we'll see what this can do. Let's look at the stats at the halfway mark of the season then. So nine races completed, four wins, 7% rewards, 120,000 team jackpot, no team days. So, so we might take one or two of those in the second half of the season. But south watching, we'll find out who will come out on top in the beach next time.